Hello folks, Dick Fairburn here, talking about self-defense cartridges and handguns. Continuing in my long line of these cartridges, because there's a lot to choose from. Today I'm going to talk about the mouse gun cartridges. I put these into that category. The 25 ACP, the 32 ACP, and the 22 long rifle. Are these rounds ever suitable for self-defense? Even with the best ammunition that's available nowadays? Not sure. If you want to hear what I think about this, stick around. Okay, the mouse gun cartridges predate most of the serious self-defense cartridges that we've been looking at in this series. More than 100 years ago, before he ever went to work on the pistol, which would become the 1911, John Browning created pocket pistols, and he created the small calibers to feed them. He worked for both Colt and Fabrique Nationale in Belgium. He developed the 25 ACP, he developed the 32 ACP, he also developed the 380, but that's already been covered because in my opinion the 380 is the power floor, that is, that is the marginal level of power we need for personal self-defense. In this discussion of mouse guns, I'm going to inc include pistols chambered for the 22 long rifle. Now the others, I, I've shown head stamps and things like that, I don't really have a 25 ACP or a 32 ACP and I don't really want one <laughs> frankly and I don't even have examples of ammunition to take a picture of so I pictured the 22 long rifle in this one for a couple of reasons because I have some and because of these cartridges I think it's the only one that might be suitable for self-defense in some circumstances so let's talk about them the 25 ACP, the smallest and weakest of the mouse guns. It's known as the 6.35 millimeter in Europe. It was introduced in 1905 in the FN model 1905 pistol. It launches a 50 grain full metal jacket bullet at 760 feet per second. The word pipsqueak comes to mind. Now, I've shot 25s. They don't impress me. There are some really, really well-made examples in 25 ACP pistols, but in my experience, they're kind of few and far between. Generally, these are collectors that have, you know, the, the baby Brownings, uh, the FNs, the Colts. A lot of them are more like the Jennings pistols that were made a number of years ago that may or may not function at all. 25 does not impress me. To me, the 25 is like, if I really need to defend myself against a mouse, yeah, maybe. It's probably going to wound it. It'll run off and die. But against people, I don't think it's a great idea at all. As I said, there were some really nice 25s made over the years. The Colt Vest Pocket was a model. Uh, the FN, the Baby Browning. Uh, but a lot of these are junk pistols. There are millions and millions of these 25 caliber pistols out there. And in any well-supplied gun store, you're going to see 25 ACP ammunition on the shelf because people have them and people want ammo for them. And people carry them for self-defense. The only scenario I, I can figure where they might really work is one statistic is that the, the, the most common number of rounds fired in a self-defense situation, civilian concealed carry, the most common number fired is zero. Because in many, many cases, the mere presence of a gun, when you pull out a gun and confront the attacker, a lot of times it's like they don't want to play anymore and they'll take off. So just the mere presence of a gun can scare them off. So I guess the 25 might be valuable as a bluff gun. If you're going to do that, I would suggest you get one that's nickel-plated, chrome-plated, stainless steel, bright, shiny, 
so that it's very visible so that when you pull it out and flash it the bad guy sees you have some metal in your hand and if he's one that's not going to take you on then he'll run if he's one that is going to take you on or has his own gun which is likely to be a lot larger you could be in a very bad situation. Here's a 25 ACP story that I will give you as an example. Many years ago, I was still in high school, there was a murder committed in a park at the edge of my hometown here, and it was committed with a 25 ACP pistol. You know, when I became a cop, and you know, you hear the war stories of the cops, and they investigated this murder, and I was told that the killer was unable to get his victim to quit breathing and die after he had shot him repeatedly in the head with a 25 AC pistol at almost contact range. The murderer had to go back to his vehicle, reload the magazine with more 25s, and go back and give more headshots until he finally, you know, found a thin spot up on the temple and got the bullet to go in deep enough into the brain to actually kill the guy. And to, to tell you, one of the other reputations of this county that I live in, is that guy got like five years in prison for the murder. So um, we do things differently here. Jeff Cooper, I heard him tell the story at Gunsight. He said someone asked him one time if 25 would be suitable as a self-defense pistol. And he said he replied to the man that you're welcome to carry a 25, but you shouldn't load it. And he said, if it's loaded, you might shoot it. If you shoot it, you might accidentally hit the guy. And if you hit him, you're gonna piss him off and you're gonna have a hell of a fight on your hands. So, essentially, he's saying, yeah, you can use it as a bluff gun, but I don't recommend you shoot anybody with it. I used that story a number of years ago when one of my police officers came in, and, and my, the policy of our agency was that a backup gun had to be caliber 380 or larger. And he said, hey, I've got this baby Browning that was my dad's. It's a really cool little pistol, and I like it. Can I carry a 25? And so I used Jeff Cooper's story. I said, yeah, you can carry it if you want to, but you can't load it because... You might piss somebody off. But as I mentioned, 25 ACP ammo is out there. There are millions of these little pistols floating around. There are jacketed hollow point loads available for the 25. I do not recommend them. If you are foolish enough to carry a 25 loaded as a self-defense pistol, load that thing with full metal jackets. What did I tell you? 50 grains at 760 feet per second. And that's probably a little optimistic if you want to go chronograph these loads. You need all the penetration you can possibly get to ever have a chance of doing any damage with this 25 ACP. So if you're going to carry it and you're going to load it, and I don't, don't trust anything but a full metal jacket to give you any kind of decent penetration. Where do I rate the 25 ACP as a self-defense cartridge? inadequate. Maybe two adjectives, totally inadequate. If that's what you've got, find something better. Okay, one step up in John Browning's design. The 32 ACP automatic Colt pistol was another, even older, John Browning design. It dates back beyond the 25 to 1900, and it was introduced in the FN model 1900, made in Belgium. This is called the 7.65 millimeter in Europe. This was the mainstay in World War II for a lot of military pistols. Primarily the police pistols in Germany were 7.65s. The German Gestapo for years that they carried the 32 in a Walther PP. But I got a feeling just whipping out that Gestapo identity badge probably scared more people to death than the 32 over the years. And curiously, this was also what was issued to United States military generals in the form of the Colt Model 1903 pocket pistol, pocket hammerless. And who can be more famous than 007? James Bond. In the first James Bond movie, Dr. No, he was forced to turn in his Beretta 25, which he loved so much, for this much more powerful Walther PPK chambered for the 32 ACP. And as far as I'm concerned, all that does is tell you that Ian Fleming might have been a great spy novel writer, but he didn't really know much about guns. Now, while the specifications vary somewhat, the general gist of a 32 ACP is that it launches a 71 grain full metal jacket bullet at about 900 feet per second. 
50% more roughly bullet than a 25 and 150 feet per second or so faster. So that's a substantial jump up from a 25, but it's not a substantial cartridge at all, in my opinion. There are lighter weight projectiles out there, jacketed hollow point designs. Several makers will have them on the market there, but I just I question how well the expanding bullets are going to perform in terms of expansion and penetration. I have not done much work with the 32 at all myself. I have shot a couple of them. I've done a little bit of work with them. I have not tested them for terminal ballistics because I just don't think they have much. If they expand at all, these jacketed hollow points in the 32, if they expand at all, penetration is going to fall well short of the recommended 12 inch minimum. So if you carry a 32, like I said for the 25, use full metal jacket bullets. And make sure you aim small to miss small, like you would have to with the 25. What do I mean by that? Since these are probably going to be used at very, very close range, I think body shots are almost a waste of time. you got to probably go for head shots. It is, the forehead, especially because of both the angle and the thickness of the bone, is very difficult to penetrate. But if you shoot for the eyes, that's a thin area in the skull, you might get inside the brain. More importantly, I think if you put a couple of rounds in the vicinity of somebody's eyes, you're probably going to take the fight out of them no matter what caliber you hit them with. So that's probably where you should focus your training is at very close range, hitting very small moving targets, the human head, and wouldn't hurt to pray a lot too. The 32 just is not much gun. While the 32 is a step up from the 25 on the power scale, I still consider it to be wholly inadequate for personal self-defense. There are quality 380 pistols available on the market that are hardly any bigger than a 32. But the 380 is a marginal self-defense round. So, I suggest you move up from the 32. Now, I did once have access to a little Colt 1903 hammerless pocket pistol. Nice shape. It was a, not a collector grade gun, but it shot very well. And I had a couple boxes of ammo on the range that day. It was a lot of fun to shoot. We also had a little llama, the, the, the mini 9mm pattern pistol they built for a number of years in both uh, 32 and 380. Uh, let's just say a very high ranking state police guy had one of those llamas in 32 that was acting up. So he brought it down to the academy range. I figured out what was wrong, got it working for him, and we put a, a box or so of ammo through it to make sure it was going to function. They're fun to shoot. They're neat little pistols. They're very small. They're very easy to carry and very easy to conceal. But if it comes to the point of saving your life, it's, there's just not much there. Okay, I listed three calibers on my mouse gun list. The 25, the 32, and the 22 long rifle rimfire. Finally, we come to the one mouse gun cartridge I think might have some usefulness. 22 long rifle. It was introduced by the J. Stephen Arms and Tool Company. I have a couple of Stephen shotguns my dad had when I was young. And I've even acquired a Stephen side-by-side -side that cost me 20 bucks. Functions just fine. I had it cut down to uh, just 19-inch barrels when I lived in Wyoming. And uh, we had a lot of tourist events in our town in Wyoming over the course of the year. And I was recruited to be the deputy who was going to shoot the guy riding down the street with a revolver in each hand riding the horse. So I sawed off that 12 gauge double and we loaded black powder blanks for it and uh, simple, inexpensive, but reliable. The 22 long rifle is a rimless cartridge. And that means instead of a central primer to be impacted to launch the explosive in the bullet, you fire it on the rim. Rim fire cartridges are thought by many people to be a little less reliable than center fire. In my experience, if you buy premium grade 22 ammunition, they're virtually 100% going to fire. If you buy the bulk boxes, and I mean, a number of years ago, I stocked up literally a lifetime supply of 22s by buying bulk boxes. Uh, Gander Mountain stores were, were still uh, going then. We had one in my community. And three or four times a year, they would put federal 525 round bulk boxes on sale. Well, they weren't really on sale. They were 1995 back then but they give you a rebate. You could buy up to two, you get a $5 rebate on each one, so that's 15 bucks for 525 rounds. So when that happened three or four times every year, I bought two three or four times a year. I have a lot of 22 ammo. Those bulk rounds, I think, are loaded on different machinery, and out of each 525 round 
bulk box, it's not unusual to get one or two that may not fire. You can even hit them multiple times, rotate it around, hit the, hit the rim on another location, and they still won't fire. But as I said, with premium grade 22 ammunition, I don't think reliability is a problem at all. There are probably more 22 long rifle cartridges loaded in the United States than all the other calibers added together. That may not be a stretch. They turn these things out by the bazillions every year. And who didn't grow up with a 22 rifle? If you didn't grow up with a 22, where the hell did you grow up? If you're a shooter and you don't own a 22, you're a gun person, you need one. Everybody needs one. They're not only fun, they're great training. Now, 22 caliber pistols are available as revolvers, semi-autos, and derringers. In so many brand names and so many variations, I wouldn't attempt to catalog them. The variety of 22 ammunition out there, the loads that are available, are just mind-boggling. I, I think by the time you tried to catalog all of them, there would be new ones that would force you to start over again. There are really only two loads, as I, as I say this, that were specifically designed for self-defense in short-barreled pistols and revolvers. The first is Federal Punch 22 long rifle ammunition. It has a nickel-plated flat tip on the bullet, and it will reach minimum gelatin penetration standard of 12 inches of, of penetration. Okay, this is not a hollow point, not going to expand, but it's going to drive in 12 inches. That's all you're going to probably get from a 22 long rifle, is try to meet that penetration standard. If you use a bullet that expands at all, you're not going to get penetration very deep at all. It, it's just, there's not enough power there to, to do both of those functions. Winchester makes a silver tip 22 long rifle, and it is designed to break off the hollow point section as fragments. So it's going to do that little bit of damage up front. It's going to leave those fragments in the shallow penetration. What is left when they break off is essentially a, a wad cutter, a flat point type bullet, and it will supposedly reach the 12 inch minimum penetration standard as well. So punch makes one, the Federal Punch, and the Winchester Silver Tip are probably viable self-defense rounds if you're going to carry a 22 long rifle for self-defense. I'm told there is a new load coming on the market and probably by the time you see this I will have been to the SHOT Show and found it. Yeah, I'm told it is a jacketed hollow point design much like a centerfire jacketed hollow point design and I'm not sure who makes it so I will, I will attempt to find that at the SHOT Show and uh, give you an update on that in a timely fashion. There's another load that I can recommend without reservation and, and uh, I, I, I carry a concealed pistol occasionally in 22 and this is a little Walter P. 22. I call this my Obama gun because uh, the day after he got elected, I, I went to a local store here and I bought this cute little green frame 22 because I knew Obama was going to try to keep us from buying guns. The times when I carry this is when I'm going to the farm that I hunt. If I'm, if I'm uh, putting up tree stands, putting up trail cameras, putting in uh, food plots, things like that. I'm not out looking to disturb the woods with guns going off. I'm not really concerned about personal self-defense out there. I'm likely to be the only person that I'm going to come in contact with. And this is just a neat little trail gun. We occasionally get raccoons that have, I'm not sure if it's distemper or rabies, but they will act up. They're very obviously very sick. A lot of times you can hear them making weird noise. That's what will draw you to them. This is a... a perfectly effective raccoon dispatcher. And I don't necessarily carry it concealed. I, I just carry it outside waistband in a, uh, a little plastic holster. But my thought was, you know, on the way there, on the way home, if I happen to put a jacket on and stop at the grocery store on the way home or something, this is my concealed carry pistol. What am I going to carry in this? It is a 10 round magazine, so 10 plus one. It is a double single gun, so it had, I, it's got a magazine disconnector, which I absolutely despise. I haven't figured out how to deactivate it yet. It's a double single action gun. This is, I'll show you that this is loaded, unloaded and safe. It's a double single gun so I can get that first round by trigger cocking. If it doesn't fire for some reason, I can hit it again. But when that slide works, it's going to cock the hammer and so every subsequent shot is single action. Fun little pistol. I like it. 
But I thought, gee, if I'm at the grocery store and something goes bad, I need something in there that I can do some damage with. Winchester Super X, they had a couple of loads that, that launched 40 grain bullets. One was a 40 grain solid, and the other was, I think, a 40 grain hollow point, as I recall. One was rated at 1,300 feet per second, which is a rifle velocity. And the other was over 1,400 feet per second, again, a rifle velocity. So I put those in there, but I used, I make sure I use the solid bullet because that's going to get me real close to 12 inches of penetration. So how am I going to use this? If I have to go with body shots, I got 11 rounds. I'm going to go with a hellacious flurry of bullets. If I have to use it in a self-defense situation and I'm close, which is probably going to be likely, just like I mentioned with the 25 and the 32, you got to shoot for the face, shoot for the eyes, practice hitting a small moving target. And here's the big advantage I see to the 22 over those other mouse gun rounds. 22 ammunition went crazy a couple years ago. Now it's down to where you can find it for anywhere from six to eight cents a round again. So this is pretty cheap shooting. The advantage to the 22 is I can buy enough ammunition and I can do enough live fire on the range that I can get really good with these little pistols. And that's what you have to do if you're going to be doing self-defense with a 22. So I carry mine under very specialized conditions when I'm revolving around working out at the deer hunting farm and, you know, might be running back and forth on my side by side or something like that. To carry a 22 long rifle as a primary self-defense pistol, I think is a bad idea. With a couple of exceptions. I have some friends who are getting pretty old. I consider myself kind of old, but they're old. Functioning the slide of a center fire pistol can be a pretty good job. And some of these people cannot hardly even work the slide of a 380. The Smith & Wesson EZ pistols are designed specifically for light, easy slide racking. Uh, that might be a solution. But when, when I have people who simply cannot manipulate a semi-automatic pistol, even a, 20, even a, uh, a 380 or something, then I say, we might want to look at a 22. It's better than a sharp stick. And if you practice enough with it to get good, it might work. So the alternative to a semi-automatic is a revolver. In terms of a small, lightweight semi-automatic, Ruger makes their LCP, their uh, Lightweight Compact Pistol, I think that stands for. The LCP-2 is available as a 10-round capacity, plus one twenty-two. Small, very easy to conceal, fairly easy to shoot. Sights aren't the greatest, but they'll get you by. So as a semi-automatic pistol, that's an inexpensive way. If you can't handle anything else, look at that Ruger LCP. If you still have strength in your trigger fingers to, to work the double action revolvers, Smith & Wesson makes a Model 317 Airlight, uh, which is a J-frame, has eight rounds capacity in the cylinder. I believe it's a stainless steel gun and an alloy frame, very lightweight. They're about 11 ounces. They also make... A 43, which is called a hammerless, it's not. The hammer is there, it's just inside the frame. You cannot manually cock the Model 43s. The Model 43C has a covered hammer, has about a two inch barrel, eight round capacity in the cylinder, weighs about 11 ounces. And if you can manipulate that 10, 12, 14 pound double action pull, really nice little super lightweight 22 pistol. I see either of these, either that, that Ruger LCP-2, which I think they call the light rack because it's so easy to use, or one of the Smith & Wesson 22 revolvers, I think is a very viable backup gun for police officers or even backup gun for civilians. If, if, they're, you know, if you typically work in a bad neighborhood and you think, like Clint Smith says, you know, two is one and one is none, having a backup gun with you is not a bad idea. I'd probably choose a 38 or a 380 myself, but a little 22 can be very light, very easy to carry, and, you know, it'll kill you, no doubt about it. Like I said, if you're going to use a little 22 for self-defense, then you need to practice extensively. You need to be able to hit small, moving targets at close range. Luckily, the ammo's cheap enough, we can do that. So where do I put the 22 if I have to use this for self-defense use? Where do I put this on the the power continuum. I told you the 25 and the 32, in my opinion, are completely inadequate. 
I will say the 22 long rifle is also inadequate for body shots. Any of them will work if I can put it in the vicinity of the bad guy's eyes. The 22, if I if I had to pick one, I would pick the 22 if you absolutely cannot handle any other firearm. I think the 22 is a better choice than the 25, better choice than the 32, simply because some some really well designed little concealed carry pistols are available, modern pistols, and the ammo is inexpensive enough you can shoot a lot and you can get the level of skill you need to try to get yourself out of a bind with a little mouse gun. So that's what I think about the mouse gun calibers. I think they are inadequate. I think they are better than a sharp stick. And if you can get skillful enough with a 22, it might save the day. Next, I'm gonna talk about, I think, the newest self-defense cartridge that has yet to hit the market. It's just a little over a year old now. The 30 Super Carry. And I'm also going to talk about the 32 Magnum revolvers because we're talking about the same bullet diameter, the same bullet weights, and very similar velocities. So they all kind of lump together. Folks, if you think these videos are useful to you, if you enjoy watching them, then please subscribe, give me the like, make a comment, and help me build this channel. I'm hopefully giving you information that will help you choose what you need to be safe in this environment out there. The country is becoming more and more dangerous every day. So be safe out there, and thank you very much for watching. Okay, we've got them both here now. You ready? Bud got one. Ginger got one. Uh-huh. Oh, she missed it. She usually gets them, doesn't she, Bud? Mm -hmm. Okay, girl. Last one. You ready? You ready? Yeah! That's all there is till next time.